presentation I'm going to discuss the making of uh, Rorschach mask animations and their projection over 3D surfaces. These are entries for the Wolfram Computational Art Contest 2022. It was held uh, in April, May this year. This is the two-dimensional animation and this uh, the three-dimensional animations with which the two-dimensional animations are mapped over a certain three-dimensional object, head. Right. Okay, so uh, the this effect is uh, is uh, from the movie um, Watchmen. The one of the main protagonists is uh, Rorschach. Let me kind of uh, find him somewhere here. And so Rorschach is um, is narrating uh, the story, and he has uh, this um, uh, uh, mask over which there is like continuous animation. So. I'm going to um, I'm going to use the version of this notebook here to, to do the presentation. There is another um, notebook I'm going to use. Uh, this is with the actual presentation aids, and here in this presentation aids, I'm going to show you the um, animation animations which are done for uh, the Rosha character. So here they're explaining how how this was uh, was happening. And how they did it, they used definitely very different process than mine to do the animations. Um, anyway, it's an interesting question how this is uh, being done. So uh, the presentation is going to have these two parts, the how we make the 2D animations. The biggest secret is somewhat hard to document and explain just in an article. I think it needs to be demonstrated. And the second big secret, uh, which is for the 3D animations, is how the actual projection is done. All right, so I'm going to go through, uh, through this notebook here. So basically, we, we create a certain set of uh, random Rorschach images. And from there, we apply latent semantic analysis. We make an image basis. I'm going to show what this image basis is. And with this image basis uh, allows us to do some sort of guided animation. And this is how these guided animations are being done. This uh, image basis which we built is being used to produce the animations. We apply certain image Im effects like say um, the oil painting effect or something else and then we export the animations and then the projections happen. I am going to be discussing this in, in more detail. So uh, let's actually go through um, this uh, first step here in which uh, how we make uh, random Rorschachs. And I'm going to expand this notebook to fill in the screen. So I made a, a special function for this and committed it in uh, the Wolfram function repository. It's not necessary. It wasn't necessary, but actually it could have um, I, it could have helped a lot the process. Ultimately, I didn't exactly use that. I was fair, fairly advanced with the process itself using, um, using a very similar but different implementation. Nevertheless, uh, this, is, this is one of the ways to, to kind of uh, do what I'm uh, showing here in this uh, diagram in which we make uh, a bunch of random Rorschach images. So we have created them. In saying this way, right? It, almost it does not matter how these images are created. We want to do that in order to produce uh, to produce the basis. Like I produce, like say, a few hundred of those. And so here, let's actually go uh, through the process here. Um, yeah, obviously, it would be nice to uh, project these um, animations over a cloth. Right to imitate a mask. So here is just uh, we're getting the, the mask. So I have generated the, um, the images here and I have extracted the, the basis. I can show you what this uh, basis is. It's um, I basically have um, uh, the latest semantic analysis applied, uh, latest sem semantic analysis workflow, typical one applied over this collection of images. And you can see this is the basis. Any other image we see, any other Rorschach image we see is going to be decomposed. In the same in, in this basis, I'm going to use this matrix here, H, which is a sparse matrix, kind of sort of sparse, but 
uh, you can see I have extracted uh, a basis of 80 images and I have like say 74,108 pixels or whatever. Okay, so um, so here then uh, I'm selecting uh, certain images through which I want to guide the animations. Now, uh, because uh, in order to apply the latent semantic analysis, uh, it is better to actually negate the images, to have white on black, because white is going to have the value one and black is going to have the value zero. So here we apply the, the latent semantic analysis and we make some we make some image reconstruction. This is where the big secret is. I'm going to explain in more detail what is happening. So uh, we can see I after I have created this guided animation between between those the animation which is guided by those uh, Rorschach images. After I have created that, actually let's actually demonstrate this. So if I take this path here. Right, and so if I if I start running this, we should be, we should see some of these uh, being produced, and of course I need to think in in negation, which I can actually do uh, here. So, for example, we just pass this, and then we're now at this one, then we go to the first one, then we're here at the second one, then. Uh, this one here and so forth right the images are somewhat uh, distorted because um, they uh, they come with when I generate them they come with different sizes and I need to have some uniform uh, sizes across the dimensions all right now after that I can uh, as I said I can apply certain uh, image effects like say here we can see I'm uh, applying the oil painting effect and so this is what is what I'm using ultimately right and we can also superimpose it uh, with uh, the with the cloth right so if i the cloth i prepared earlier it can be yeah it can be used and then you can see with image multiply or whatever right i'm making this in position and yeah then we basically export the images all right so uh, as i promised the big secret which is hard to explain and so forth uh, coming up so here i'm going to be switching to this other notebook right in which uh, we're discussing how the animation happens. So there, there are probably two ways to explain it. And I'm going to uh, show how I did it first with uh, using uh, random images. So I have certain random Rorschach um, uh, image here. And this is again, this is my basis, right? Basis of images. And I'm saying, okay, I can decompose this um, image into this basis. So again, let me reevaluate this. These are, uh, these are image bases, which if I uh, put on top of each other and multiply with certain weights, the weights can be positive or negative, I claim that I can produce something that resembles the, the original image. This is what is happening here, extracting the weights for this basis, it's what is happening here. Now, if I, if I multiply this with, uh, if I multiply these weights, with some kind of random numbers, say close to one. I'm, I'll produce some image which is probably uh, kind of similar, you know, but animated and stretch, stretched in some way. So uh, let's actually show how is this happening. So here, you know, you can see I'm doing exactly that. There's certain learning parameter. And so, yeah, we can see how I'm basically changing, changing these weights and something else is being produced. Let me return this again. The random one is not, it's not that good, but this is more or less how I did it. And this is a little bit, uh, there's some normalization here that needs to be done in order to show, uh, to show what is happening really in practice, right? Now, if I, if I actually use uh, this, um, these images and I, I can produce an animation. So this is with this uh, uh, motion, Rorschachs. I'm just kind of doing some random, random stretching or changing of this original image. I had big hopes of, about this effect and uh, obviously it's not that interesting. So we actually need to, to do some sort of guided motion, guided animation. So, and so here I'm going to produce some 
uh, new image so we still use this one we still use uh, this image as a starting one and then I, I'm producing a new image here and this is the representation of the new image and here I'm going to to kind of uh, from the the first image I'm going to transform to the new one ideally what well, this is what I'm going to demonstrate so all right so in case uh, in case it's uh, you know uh, it's of interest let's actually repeat the whole exercise so I'm going to remove those uh, random images here and I'm going to to produce some uh, let's say some image say I like right and it seems like to me it seems that these are uh, uh, two two parrots or two uh, crows facing each other all right so I have represented I'm representing this image into my uh, basis which I have extracted I'm going to try to find some new image here which is interesting and strange enough uh, like okay something like this I'm going to to represent that image too now I have these two two images these are my uh, the negated version of my crows right and here I'm uh, I'm going to be moving uh, this slider and I'm going to transform to this new new image here so all right now what is happening here is that we have you can see uh, the stretching itself I'm basically moving from one basis to another it's a very simple procedure so uh, my original basis is in blue the the one which I'm uh, I'm going after is in orange so initially both of both bases uh, coincide and then I uh, gradually move from the first basis to the second one so basically these points here you see I'm kind of using some kind of gradual um, decrease you can see it here it's uh, I divide so say by 200 and multiply by this uh, parameter n right now if I uh, I basically choose some image which was not that interesting but I guess let's see I'm going to try to play with this a little bit more okay so here right this these are the, the differences are much more dramatic now between the two images and yeah we can see how see this is happening all right so after you have done this we just do it systematically right we actually do this uh, guided animation and so here we can see uh, how is this uh, how from the first image we get uh, transformed into the into the second one so basically this is it this is the big secret right for the two-dimensional images so if I go back to this uh, diagram here yeah so this is how we made the 2d animations this is how we do the um, interpolation between the guiding images so then uh, we apply some image effects as I said and export uh, the images now we want to project this on uh, a 3d surface for the surface which is uh, represents a head right okay so here I'm going to um, let me see do I have it here no this is not in this uh, notebook anymore I'm going to to move to to this notebook so there's a 3d uh, um, reconstruction neural network that can be used for this uh, and actually let's uh, let's kind of demonstrate this so somewhere here I'm going to go to uh, Wolfram, Wolfram Neural Network Repository and here I'm going to search for volumetric uh, I think it's the volumetric uh, neural network right and so here yeah let's actually let's actually go through the process uh, so here I'm going to go to my uh, to my presentation 8 uh, notebook I'm going to do uh, 3d reconstruction so let's uh, name this in some way right this is a neural network right now it's untrained but uh, you can see oh no it's trained it's trained just fine we are going to apply this uh, trained network into some uh, some image uh, of uh, uh, of uh, say the actor who played Rorschach right and so here I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do uh, what was his name Jackie 
uh, Haley. Haley, I think. Early Haley, yes, right. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to do a uh, search through images, right? And so here we can see this is Rorschach. This is the Rorschach character without the mask, right? And so um, that's actually, I'm going to select some something more convenient to deal with. And maybe, right, so if I do, yeah, let's do Rorschach, right? Let's see what is going to happen. Okay, so um, I'm not sure how good this uh, image is going to be. And this is, uh, so I'm just going to, to take this one, right? So I'm going to, to copy the image, right? And put it here. So I'm going to make, uh, assign it to a face. And before going further, I'm going to actually crop it, right? So I'm going to do some cropping like this. Not strictly required. I think the network is going to, neural network is going to work on it just fine. Now I'm actually following, uh, following more or less uh, the guiding which is uh, in, the, in the documentation by Wolfram Research and or how this uh, neural network is supposed to be used. So here you can see uh, I'm applying this uh, uh, volumetric regression net for 3D face reconstruction. I'm applying it over this image. I'm producing, I'm producing this, uh, this uh, 3D head. So there's a, there's a significant contrast here in, uh, in, for his nose. That's why we kind of see the nose being uh, quite, um, quite protruding. All right, so then uh, we have done, we, after we have done this, this part, right, we actually um, want to, it's a little bit uh, probably hard to explain what's going on, but we're, I'm doing certain, certain, um, certain transformations on the actual face and um, it's like with certain parameters and so forth, right? And then uh, we we want to do uh, some sort of uh, uh, slicing over over the over the face, and uh, this uh, we're going to be using these uh, slices to to do some kind of coloring on top of that. And um, let me see somewhere here, right? I might do this. Okay, and yeah, this is basically this is a reconstruction of the of the face, right? Now. Because I was getting consistently this kind of uh, uh, 3D faces, which I didn't, didn't particularly like, I, I decided to ultimately use, uh, to use as a starting point uh, a different face actually provided by the, given in the documentation. And so it's also smaller. So let's just actually do, uh, do the whole process here, right? And so you can see that um, with, uh, with, with this face, we actually, in my opinion, we get better, better or more useful representation. So I'm using this in my animations. This actually can be seen uh, here in the movie uh, itself. You can see how uh, this face is, uh, this face is uh, uh, tilted. This uh, heads are tilted. Like, let me, yeah. Like this tilt we see here, maybe. So there's like this uh, kind of, when they face us uh, completely, yeah, there's like this kind of tilt. It's more or less the same tilt of, uh, of the model here, right? You can see how uh, the head is tilted. All right, so basically this was it. This was the, 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 um, the big thing about uh, projecting the 2D animations over the 3D surface. So basically, instead of using, uh, using uh, the, um, this photo, to color the 3D slices. I'm using the Rorschach masks I have derived. And this needs to be done you know, systematically, ideally quickly enough and so forth. And, um, and obviously I can do this uh, in variety of ways, meaning how it was shown here in this animation. Um, I can have the, um, the Rorschach um, in blobs, blobs being uh, more centered or to cover the whole head or you know somewhat somewhat more spread out and so forth so uh, there's a uh, there's a fair amount of uh, import export of images here and uh, 
the functionalities in uh, Wolfram language for doing import export of, uh, of uh, videos and images really helped. The other thing which uh, really helped was um, the readily, readily available parallel computations uh, abilities. Um, and so let's actually spell this out. There's a, as I mentioned, the out of the box uh, parallel programming functionalities, they really help, especially when I need to when I need to experiment quickly with this and make a decision, but I also I was doing this, uh, you know, while I'm doing something else, you know, this was more like a part time um, type of hobby project, um, not a full time uh, project for which I'm being paid. So I might get out of patience if I if I didn't use parallel programming, if it was like, say, two times or five times or ten times slower. The other is that um, the comprehensive image processing and image effects functionalities this is very important. This speed up quite a lot of the work, allows uh, quite a lot of uh, the experimentation. I used uh, both uh, singular value decomposition for, to derive the image basis. Like uh, this is a dimension reduction algorithm, singular value decomposition. And um, of course, the neural network uh, functionalities, that's really, really helpful. Now the neural networks, the fact that we can apply, apply them to both uh, 2D and 3D images, that's really, really great. Um, I would ha I have to say, um, thinking about publishing this in the Wolfram function repository, making this Rorschach, um, Rorschach entry uh, function, it, it was really, it was uh, really a good um, way to think about um, robustness and signatures and having this uh, uh, well-tested, readily out-of-the-box functionality. Let me try to do uh, Rorschach here. So in case it's not clear, we should be able to, to find the random Rorschach function here. And uh, it was uh, built upon some other previous, previous uh, random generation uh, functionalities. The other is that related semantic analysis workflows, that's actually uh, in many ways, this is pretty standard, what I'm showing here into, in this diagram. So having a bunch of objects, be that text or images, uh, we represent them, the text or images, we represent them in a linear vector space, and then in that linear vector space, we extract certain bases. It can be bases of uh, documents, it can be image bases like what it is here. And this can be used for doing approximation or doing some further uh, evaluations. I'm actually going to show this here. So there's a similar, there's a related project here uh, in community about uh, the structure of Chinese characters. And again, I'm using related semantic analysis. Here, the Chinese characters are being um, represented in a linear vector space. We can see that we can obtain different image bases. Uh, this again, using singular value decomposition, we can see what with these procedures, we can actually get typical radicals in um, uh, writing uh, Chinese characters. And more to the point of, sim to this of similarity between the Rorschach masks and this project is that when I get some character which I haven't seen before, I can decompose it in this way and then try to approximate it with a basis of images. And this is what is happening. So this is what was happening with the guided guided animations. These guided animations I was uh, talking about here. Each of these images is being decomposed into the bases which have been derived in the previous step. And then through with the um, animation procedure I was showing here, with uh, moving between the bases, ex ex interpolating between the bases. This is how we get the actual animations. All right, uh, another thing about latent semantic analysis combined, used properly combined with some other machine learning algorithms like say nearest neighbors classifiers. It can produce fairly good classifiers of uh, 100 and digits. And this is one of the, another kind of um, um, blog post which illustrates this. So I have applied this uh, latent semantic analysis image basis of uh, uh, Arabic letters, uh, 100 and Arabic letters. All right, so uh, this is it and thank you for your attention.